Hey guys, it's Lion here with Hobbies Man. Once again, and today we're going to be doing another manga review. We're going to be looking at Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid in color. And I do apologize for the weird lighting situation. That's why I'm filming this way. And actually, I think I kind of like the setup a little bit more than usual. But it's not really my reading look. So it, it doesn't... It feels a little bit awkward to sit here. Because I have to bring in elements that are not usual. Uh, things that are in my room. But, you know, you guys let me know which way it looks better. And uh, I'll try to change it for the channel. Because I actually do like how this looks. I think it's pretty interesting. Um, but yeah, Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. There we go. Chromatic Edition. This is the first one. There's a second one. And I think it's available for pre-order from Seven Seas already. I saw a tweet about it today. And I'm definitely going to get it. I really enjoy this. So let's go over the book facts. And then I'll talk about the premise of the story. And then I'll talk about this book. Because this book isn't really a, a volume of manga. As much as it is a collection with a very specific purpose. Right? So... It's Kobayashi's Dragon Maid in color or chromatic edition or, you know, whatever you, also want, you might want to call it is a, uh, I'm trying to figure out a way to make it work. Okay. I'll just do it like this then. Um, is a uh, story by Kul Kyosinja, who has done quite a few works that are actually quite well liked. The current one that's serializing right now is Ida 10, uh, where he only does the artwork. There's one where he does a story called Peach Boy Riverside, I think, or Riverside Peach Boy or something like that. It's about this person that has like a dragon, or sorry, a bunny outfit. Um, it's published by Seven Seas, as you guys can see right there. This is under their normal line, so that's nice. And um, the demographic is seinen. The genres here are fantasy, comedy, slice of life, and yuri. Most of the relationships for these characters are... Uh, female female relationships uh not all of them some of them actually i think the most important one so the 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 main one miss kobayashi and toru is primarily a yuri kind of thing and uh, it does have an adaptation it's actually quite popular and i think this was actually done as a promotional piece after the first season i'm not really sure but it does seem like that because nothing that's featured here uh is from the first season as far as i remember um but you know, don't quote me on that. I might be wrong about that. And if you do know for sure, let me know down in the comments. But everything about this does feel like a promotional piece post season one. Um, so yeah, and the rating for this book specifically is a five out of five. Um, but I don't really have a rating for the story itself because I've not really read too much of it. I only have the first three volumes and this. And so I can't really say that I'm like super uh, like knowledgeable about the series. I just know that I like it and I've seen a lot of clips on it uh, uh, on YouTube, right? So yeah, the premise of the story is that there's this woman called Kobayashi. She's this kind of kind of classical Japanese middle-class worker kind of person. Uh, you know, she goes to an office, she sits there for hours and hours and hours and she barely has time to herself. However, one day she ends up drunk and she ends up going into the forest and in this forest, she meets a dragon she and the dragon get along and something kind of goes um, kind of awry there where the dragon toru uh decides that kobayashi is the person she wants to be with that she loves miss kobayashi and so uh she decides to become kobayashi's maid because kobayashi has this kind of like otaku fervor for for mates right and so she shows up one day to kobayashi's house they start to live together and then them living together triggers a bunch of other dragons to show up um, and we get introduced to Kana who's a little girl that's a dragon uh, we get introduced to Fafnir who is a person that turned into a dragon and then became kind of part of the dragon world uh, we have Elma who is a, a dragon that is diametrically opposed to to uh, to Toru because of their ideal uh, ideologies uh, we get introduced to Lukua, who is actually Quetzalcoatl, uh, the um, feathered serpent god of Mesoamerica, also known as Kukulkan, same kind of thing. Um, and I think, I think there's a few other ones. There's Ilulu, and then there's uh, Toru's dad, who's the king of the dragons, and some other things like that. There's other characters that show up, but the main ones are Kana, Elma, Lokua, and Fafnir, as well as Toru, of course. And, well, this causes a lot of interesting, kind of ridiculous slice of life uh, situations where the dragons are introduced to human life and they kind of all partner up with a specific person and they start to develop these relationships and connections to the world that uh, are actually 
quite meaningful and quite beautiful most of the time. Uh, they are generally pretty wholesome. There was elements of like, uh, you know, etchy and fan service throughout the story and actually peppered quite often throughout the story. But ultimately, I think the most important parts are the wholesome elements, the stuff that really makes you kind of understand this kind of fi family dynamic, this kind of found family aspect that gets developed be between all the characters, right? And so that's the story of, of Ms. Kobashi's Dragon May. I definitely recommend you guys check it out, either the, the manga or the anime. The anime is probably the more affordable way of doing it, as, assuming you have a Crunchyroll account. Um, but the manga is, is available. I think it's uh, still ongoing. There's up to 12 issues of it, or 12 volumes of it right now, plus this one chromatic edition. Um, and this book doesn't follow a standard plot structure because it's not a standard manga. It's actually a collection of selected chapters um, to showcase the fact that they've been colored in, right? And so you have the opening image. This paper is not what you would expect. Usually a colored manga has paper that's much more similar to comic book paper. You know, that kind of glossy, kind of shiny, almost kind of like plasticky feeling paper. This is very normal paper, very high quality paper, but it's still normal paper. And it has um, kind of a, a texture that kind of feels like it's gonna dry your hands out uh, because it, it's normal absorbent paper. Um, but the coloring and the printing quality of this is, is really phenomenal. I really like it. It's a very heavy book. It has a lot of nice grammage to the paper and you can definitely feel that. And then we have this introduction page that shows you all of the characters that are gonna show up uh, and gives you a little bit of information on each of them. And you get the main characters, Kobayashi, Toru, then Elma, then Kana, Ilulu, Takia, who is uh, Kobayashi's friend, Fafnir, Lukua, Magatsuchi, who is uh, Shota's father, Shota himself, Take and Chloe, who are secondary characters that show up later in the story. And you got a contents page right here that shows you the 11 chapters that are covered here. So you have chapter 30, Toru and detective work, which is actually quite cute. You have 31, Toru and Ilulu. Uh, chapter 33, Toru and the hot springs. 43 is Toru and the patrol. 46 is Lokua and Shota. 54 is Takia and Fafnir. 55 is Elma and the Freedom Movement. 62 is Kana in New York, which is actually probably my favorite chapter that was featured here. I really enjoyed that one. I thought it was really, really cute. Uh, 63 is Ilulu and the Doll, and this one's probably my second favorite. I really enjoy this aspect of this dragon having this very human kind of thing, this attachment to this little doll and this, uh, this kind of desire to see someone enjoy their doll uh, even though they're adults now, which I really like. I thought it was good. 81 is Ilulu and mating season. And this one is not really my favorite. I really enjoyed the fan service aspect, but I think that it was a little bit out of touch with the rest of the chapters that were here. It would have been better to have like a different set of collections based on different kind of themes that are inside the, 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 the manga, right? So yeah, I didn't really like the inclusion of this one because it doesn't really fit in with the rest of them, but I understand why it was there because, you know, it's, it's, it's actually quite um, enjoyable to look at, especially in color, but it, it, it doesn't feel thematically relevant to the other ones. And then uh, 91, Toru in Alone Time, and this is actually a very good way of ending the story uh, or ending the selection of chapters here by reaffirming Toru and uh, Kobayashi's very nebulously defined, but very clearly um, understanded relationship, right? Uh, and I really like that. I, I think uh, overall the selection was pretty great of, uh, for the chapters here. However, I really think that they really should have focused on earlier chapters. I think they could have done a really good job here with having like multiple chromatic editions. The first chromatic edition being like before the first 30 chapters or up to the first 35 uh, and just focusing on the first chapter plus all the chapters that introduce different dragons. So the first chapter would be when Kobayashi and Toru meet, and then the next chapter should be when Kana shows up, then with uh, Shoka, when Shota summons Lokua, then when Fafnir shows up, uh, then when Elma shows up, then when uh, Kobayashi talks to Toru's dad, and then Ilulu's chapter should have been the last one. I think that would have been nice. It would have been a, about 12 chapters, I think. I think that would have been a nice first set of, of chapters for the chromatic edition and then have the ones here be the second chromatic edition and then from there on you know find more chapters as they're needed but i'm not really sure why they chose to start with chapter 30. maybe the mangaka didn't really feel like coloring any of his earlier works or maybe it was a thing of like this is being done for a specific purpose which i think was to hype up people for season two 
Um, as far as I understand, I think that is what this was for. And then the second chromatic edition might have earlier chapters. I'm not really sure. I wouldn't really like that. I think that if you started with 30, you have to move forward from that. You really shouldn't go backwards. Um, but it really depends. That is really my only complaint with this with this collection is that I really wish they would have done earlier chapters first and then had this set of chapters here be part of the second collection. Um, and once I get the, first, the, the second collection uh, that's coming out, I will kind of make another video talking about this more in depth so I can kind of explain myself better. Um, and the other kind of important thing to talk about here is that this is a very nice edition. It is very well done. Um, the page quality is amazing. The color and the printing of the color is really, really good. I really enjoy it. It has very nice colors in the sense that they're very pastel and very beautiful looking. And I like the few fight scenes that we have here because they have these really fun, like rainbow color, like choices here with the fire. I really enjoy that. I think it looks really, really great. Um, and uh, the other mild complaint that I have is that the spine is very stiff. And so it's actually quite dangerous feeling when you open the book this much and you take your time to read what's happening because it does crease it. Um, you can't see it, but you can definitely feel the crease in the paper uh, here when, uh, when you're touching it. But thankfully it, it, it's not visible because of how uh, the the printing here works. But um, it is kind of dangerous. It is definitely gonna be something that shows up if you open this too often or stay open in the middle too often. Um, but you know, at the edges, it's not so bad. It's mostly when you're in the middle section of the story, like right there, and you open the book properly that you're gonna start to have a crease. But as long as you read carefully and don't take too long to look at each page, um, you should be fine. Usually the, this, it's not really a problem, but it is kind of odd that this is the only time I've ever experienced this with a manga. Um, so I don't know, maybe it was a way to make sure that the book is kind of sturdy and that you can kind of handle it a little bit roughly because this is a lot stiffer feeling than just about any other book that I've ever had from uh, Seven Seas. So I'm not really sure. Let me see, maybe it's because it's printed somewhere else. It says printed in Canada, and I think a lot of their manga is printed in Canada as it is, so I don't think it's that. I'm not really sure what it is, why they made this choice, but um, I don't really hate it. I think it's actually useful and meaningful, um, but it does make the likelihood of damaging your manga uh, by reading it kind of uh, possible. And I, I, I'm not really someone that hates having, uh, you know, books that show their age and show that you enjoy them by having them, you know, uh, messed up and have like corners bent and, and you know, like the, the issue that happens when, when, when you have like something that you hold often where it kind of like gets worn and you kind of see these like little stains and things on, on the sides of pages. I really enjoy that usually, but not necessarily for manga because manga is a little bit more of a collectible item compared to more normal novels. And with normal novels, I'll, I'll take anything uh, as long as it's still readable, right? But with manga, I do prefer to have them be as pristine as possible. And so that's why I'm making such a fuss about this. Otherwise, I wouldn't really care. If this was a normal book uh, or a comic book, I probably wouldn't mention it as much, but because it is a manga and there's a certain level of uh, of collectability and kind of monetary value associated with um, with keeping them as, as, as nice as possible, I am mentioning it so you guys are aware of that fact so that you don't damage your books. Um, to me, it's not gonna be that big of an issue because it's barely noticeable. And I probably won't open this too often because I'll have the normal editions to look through. And I'll only come back to this when I wanna look at the specific coloring that they use. Um, but it might be something important for other people. So yeah, keep that in mind when you're reading this, be careful with it. Um, but otherwise, overall, this is a really, really great book. I really enjoyed it. I definitely recommend it. And it's actually very good for the price. It's $17, which, uh, and it has 11 chapters. So that's only slightly, I think that's only three more dollars than a normal volume of Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. So it is very much like affordable, or at least maybe not affordable is the right word, but maybe um, within the proper price range uh, of a volume. I think you can definitely splurge on this one uh, if you're a big fan of the series, uh, since it is only a few more dollars than the regular editions, right? Um, but like I said, it only starts covering chapters after the 30th one. So I think that means that it doesn't cover anything before the fourth volume. So, you know, your mileage may vary there in terms of your enjoyment based on, on that selection. So yeah, there you go. That's all I have to say about Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid in color or chromatic edition. I have both titles, so 
I'm not really sure which one to use, but there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you thought about this book if you've read it before. Let me know what you think about Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid, and let me know your opinion on whether I should continue to record in this setup because I kind of like how it looks, as long as I clean it up a little bit, or if I should go back to my usual one. Um, it really depends on timing. When I sit down to record right now, it's almost 8 p.m. Uh, when I'm recording this, and so the sun is coming down, and it was actually hitting my face while I was sitting over here. So um, that's why I chose to to sit here instead. But um, I'm willing to make a change and sit in a kind of uncomfortable chair for a while to record. Uh, if it's a nicer background, uh, I like both either way, so it's not really a, a problem. Just let me know what you guys think. Give me your opinions, and I'll kind of uh, make changes according to that. And thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed, and see you guys later.